Hey guys, so the hot topic of the day right now is that Iowa just banned trail cameras on public land or for the aid of use of hunting, even on private land. So I know a lot of guys are up and upset about this. Obviously it's a huge controversial topic. Um, I myself use trail cameras. Um, I know uh, Wisconsin right now is also considering the ban they haven't banned it. They're putting it before the uh, congressional group that advises the DNR on the deer hunting rules and regulations. But I know a lot of states are starting to ban. I know Utah, Arizona, Kansas. Um, I believe there's one more. And then Iowa now, as of this week, have now banned trail cameras. Utah is 100% across the board banned. Personally, I don't know. I think it might be a good thing. I mean, I, I know I love using them. Um, it's a huge informational tool. I'm not saying other people can't use them or shouldn't use them. But, you know, when you do years ago when I would scout, you, you know, you'd be out hunting in the woods and you just hunted in the woods. You come across a tree stand every now and again and that's about it. I noticed in the last three years, I, I don't know a spot that I go to and I'm talking I do some pretty remote areas in Wisconsin remote by Wisconsin standards there's never a spot I can't go to that there's not trail cameras um, I rarely see anybody hunting there but there's always trail cameras people just walk in they find an area on Onyx or whatever you know app they're using and they throw up a camera and they're monitoring from their home and I mean think they get probably more pictures of people I know I do than of actual deer um, personally some of my best areas are areas I don't have a camera in. Or if I have a camera and it's only like one day and you get a nice buck on camera, you hunt it the next day and then you see, you see that buck, but then they seem to just kind of disappear. Those deer have learned, they know what those cameras mean. They're not stupid, they figured it out. Um, any buck that's over three and a half, which I, I believe is you know what a, a lot of guys are targeting when you're, when you're going into some of these remote areas. Um, yeah, I think those deer have figured that stuff out. Bears don't seem to care. I use them for bear hunting, of course. Um, so if they ban trail cameras in Wisconsin across the board, I don't know if they will or not. I really hope they don't, but I see the benefits if they do. If they do, I mean, you can actually go in the woods and hunt again. I think a lot of guys will no longer just be running willy-nilly around the woods. And some of us who have been more deeply pursuing mature deer will have a lot less traffic in those areas because I do believe that a lot of guys that hunt a, a good majority that hunt out in the in the woods especially on the public land who are going back in deep and hunting swamp edges and you know super thick thickets and things if they don't have a camera picture of a deer they won't hunt it and, and there's nothing wrong with that I mean it's, it makes sense when you look at you know time versus effort um it, the truth is that just because you didn't show up on your camera doesn't mean that 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 deer is not there. I mean, I don't know how many guys can and you can attest to the fact that you have your hammer out for three months, you know, all through the summer and then in, into in early fall, and all of a sudden you're sitting there and you know this giant ten pointer walks through and you're like, what the heck? That thing has never been on my camera before, and he still wasn't on your camera. Hopefully you take him, but. Um, those deer know how to avoid that, and those deer move around a lot, and their patterns, especially those mature deer, their patterns, they really don't have, you know, solid patterns. That's why they're mature deer. That's why they've made it through the years. You know, it's not something they, they just don't do the same things every time, and that's why they stay alive, whether it's through a learning behavior or through, you know, just by chance. Some deer are just nomads, and they move around a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on the trail camera issue? I mean, do you use them? Do you not use them? Do you care if they get banned? It'll stink. You know, like I said, for bear hunting, if they ban truck cams across the board, you know, I guide for bears. Um, you would not know what bears are coming in and, and when they're coming in, which is the purpose of banning them, I guess. But, boy, that would suck. <laughs> for deer hunting, I don't know. I, I like to use them. I mean, I do get a lot of good pictures. It's awesome to see what's in the area and, 99% of the deer show up on your camera you never see in person. Um, I got a few areas I hunt in central Wisconsin that 
we'll get giant bucks on camera at least once a week. And that's the only time they've come through. They come through one time and they just, it's just the nature of the beast of the area that we hunt that the deer are, you know, they have a pretty large home range and they're just not passing through the same spots every time. You get a nice pinch point, it's like, oh, this spot's magical. And you put up a camera and you'll get 10, 15, 20 bucks, you know, different bucks throughout the, the three or four weeks, four, five weeks that you got it out. And then they never show up on camera again. You know, and I'm not talking like, you know, giant booners that are smart on cameras. I'm talking anything from nice booner crocket bucks all the way down to, you know, forks and spikes. Like they'll go through that camera, you'll see them. You might get one or two more pictures of them again. You move the camera around up and down the trails through different pinch points. You know, you just kind of put your cameras all around the place and you never see them again. All of a sudden you'll find them on a ridge on a different camera, you know, three quarters of a mile away. And it's like, oh, well, they showed up there. And all of a sudden they'll come up by one or two or three times and then they go to a different area, you know, and I mean, it's fun because it's, it's great to know that they're at least in the area. So my personal preference, if it was just me having to make an opinion on just my own hunting style, I would want drug cameras. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but if they got banned, um, I don't think it would change my hunting much. It would just be a little less exciting. You know, everyone gets that, you know, check your phone in the morning when you wake up because I do have some cell cams and then I have a bunch of SD card cams. I prefer the SD card cams over the cell cams for the most, the most part. Um, but areas where it's a two or three hour drive to the area that I hunt, I throw the cell cams up. Um, it just saves on fuel to drive all the way out there and I'm lazy. Bear hunting, all SD cards because you're getting, you know, two, three, four thousand pictures a week and I don't need my phone just basically glitching out from all the camera pictures. Um, yeah, and then, it, you know, when, if they ban trail cameras, I know they're also talking about the live scopes. I've talked to quite a few outdoorsmen on the whole live scope things. And to be honest, right now, it seems like the majority of people are against live scopes. Now, are they against them because they, I don't want to say can't afford them, but they're not willing to spend the money for them? versus they really truly feel it's unfair i think it leans more towards the latter i think a lot of people it's 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 an expensive electronic and they don't want to spend that kind of money to catch a fish um which i can understand i won't i won't ever get one i don't believe i don't i don't see a use for it um not that i'm the greatest fisherman in the world i just i don't know i don't the pursuit is kind of what is what's make fishing hunt fishing fun. Um, I mean, you can make the same argument for deer hunting, but I guess in my book, maybe be, just because it's not a newer technology, we've had cameras around since I was pretty young. So maybe, maybe I'm jaded in that. Um, but I do see that those live scopes, you, I had a conversation with a, a lady and her husband yesterday and about live scopes, they had one. And they said, well, we don't, we don't use it for, you know, this, that, and the other thing. We only go out once a week and it's just nice to find the fish in the areas that we've never fished before. And I said, well, you're right. And, that, and that's, that's good that you do that. But the problem is the majority of people who are doing it, they're not doing it that way. You know, they're using it every day. You get a lot of guys who are retired or ladies or people who only get to go out fish once a week and they don't have the knowledge, but they can get the live scope put on and they can find the fish right away. And that's fine and dandy right now, but anyone who's fished in any areas, I don't care what part of the state, what part of the country you're in, most of the lakes, the medium sized to smaller lakes, they're not like they used to be 20 years ago and they weren't 20 years ago like they were 20 years before that. Um, and now you throw live scopes in there, most of those lakes, they're going to get pounded pretty hard because now everybody can just go out one day without any scouting, without any real effort, you know, and you just cruise around your boat like, oh, there's a school and you can get on them and whether they bite or not is irrelevant, but um, they can get on that school and they can just hammer them and then they can come back in again a week later. But the problem is there's 20 people in between, they're doing the exact same thing and then there's no more fish that are of legal size to catch. And we find that a lot in the area I live, you know, we got a bunch of lakes that are nearby and you go to fish them. And when I was a kid, you could go out and you could catch, you know, a mess of fish and not, you know, it wasn't like the heydays in the 60s you hear other guys talk about, but compared to now, 
when I was back in the 90s going out fishing, you could get a limit of fish or close to it, you know, one, every now and again. Not every single day you went out, but you'd get a bunch of fish. And now you can fish all day and you might get two or three keepers if you're lucky. And you almost feel bad keeping them because there's just not many big ones left out there. Um, so I can just imagine with live scopes and you get, say, 20 different fishermen doing it. You know, and as time goes on, those things become more cost effective and then you get more guys doing it those lakes are going to get hit hard and then you got lakes like lake winnebago and stuff like that where they're a huge fishery it's going to take a long time for that to even bother or affect it but it will put a dent and so either the dnr is going to have to lower the uh limits which everyone will complain about that there's lakes that have been fished hard around wisconsin that they've lowered limits for panfish to five uh, walleyes to one or none um it's technology is a, a fickle topic. You know, some guys are 100% for it, some guys are 100% against it. I think the majority of people, in all honesty, I think are kind of like me, where you're kind of in the middle. Like we use them. If we get banned, it'll stink, but we'll, it's not going to stop us from going out hunting. It's not going to stop us from going fishing. It's just going to be a little bit different, and we'll get used to it in two, three years. It'll be fine. It's kind of like the whole baiting situation. You know, when I was a kid growing up, nobody baited. Baiting wasn't a thing. It just didn't do it. We all heard about people up in the UP who did it a lot, and you're kind of you didn't really have an opinion about it. But that's a lot of people up there used baiting as a tactic for hunting. And then it seemed to be somewhere in the 2000s that baiting really took off. I went in the military, came home from the military, and I would go out in the woods. I was like, holy snot! There's bait piles everywhere I go. It's like, and it's they weren't small. <clears throat> but it's fine. It was legal, so they did it. Then they changed the laws and they, you know, put a, a amount, quantity amount limit on there. Two gallons a day or something, if I remember correctly. And we, I used it for my kids when they started hunting. We would go out and, you know, I'd put up things for when they were, you know, 10, 9, 10 years old. And it's like, hey, they get to see a doe and get a doe or whatever. I never really found it good for box spikes, forks, sixes maybe, but... You know, mature bucks, they, they're not stupid. You get them on your trail camera after dark, but they're not dumb. Um, and they banned it slowly, county by county, with the whole COVID thing, even though it had nothing to do with, with us in the outdoors. That was 100% game farm people with their infected deer and then infecting the public deer. And then we all have to pay the price, yet they're still in business out there. You know, farming their deer, bringing out of the state and all over the state to transfer from one facility to another and... That's a whole other topic, and I'm, you know, that I do have an opinion on, and I don't, my personal opinion is all game farms for deer should be banned 100% across the board. I, I just don't see a use for it. Um, but that's my personal opinion. The people who are into it, hey, more power to you if it's legal. I can't stop you, and I'm not going to pick it in front of your house. I don't give a crap. I just, if they asked me my opinion, and if I was the lawmaker, and they said, hey, Mark, what do you want to do about game farms? I'd say, ban them. Done. I don't want any part of it. It's It's been nothing but negative on the on the public deer or, you know, the wild deer population. You know, it's just, I don't like it. And I don't understand people who will go to a game farm and shoot an animal. I don't care if it's a five-acre fenced-in area or a 500,000-acre fenced area. It's just, it's not my thing. I'm not into it. Um... I don't know what do you guys think. What what's your opinion on this stuff? It's a hot topic. People are pretty fired up about it. Some people will say I'm a piece of crap and I should die in my whatever because of my opinion. And look, I don't want to start an argument. I don't want to fight with anybody about it. These are just my opinions. And if you have a different one, I'd love to hear it. I don't. I'm not against you because you have a different opinion. We're all outdoorsmen. We all follow different uh, personal code of ethics and morals. It's not a. It's not a topic where we need to go to war over it. It's. It's just your opinion. It's fine. You're welcome to your opinion. I'm welcome to my opinion. I don't make the laws. You don't make the laws. But we can have a discourse, you know, see what people think and come to a collective, you know, see what the majority of people think. I don't know. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So, yeah, until Wisconsin bans it, I know I'll be using them. I'm not, like I said, I'm, I use trail cameras. Um, I could, I've been with people who have used a live scope and 
I definitely see the benefit of it, but at the same time I'm in that situation, I also see a detriment to the resource. And, you know, it's just deer and, and fish are not the same. They just takes much longer for it to recover. And you start getting those uh, older age class fish pulled out of there. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem to recover. I mean, we look at any lake you fish, you know, just go back 20 years and just think of how you used to fish it and where we fish it now. And it's not that there's more people. I, I, I would argue that there's less people fishing now. It, it just by the eye test. I don't know, license sales may be way up. I have no idea. I don't really, I guess I can't say I'm educated on that, but I wouldn't say that there's more fishermen now than there was 10, 20, or 30 years ago. <clears throat> I think there was a lot more outdoorsmen 30 years ago for sure. Um, I just think that the amount of fishermen or hunters out there, we're just a lot more efficient. We have technology. We can cheat these animals. Cheat's probably not a great word to use, but I'm using it anyway. But we found a way to kind of get around some of their senses because they don't kick our ass in public. I mean, they, they know how to get through the woods or the water and avoid detection. They just, they know what they're doing. They, they, their, their sole purpose is to survive and our sole purpose is to figure out how to stop that from happening. Um, yeah, what is your opinion? <clears throat> you know, post a comment below. Yeah, like and subscribe to the page. You know, we're going to have some more topics that we're going to discuss over the coming months and if you if you're still watching we have we still have the raffle going on on our fish reports yeah i can win some guided fishing trips i'm pretty sure all the guides use live scope i could be wrong um you can see it firsthand it's in a you know look at it as an educational process but we got some free fishing trips fully guided with local guides from lake winnebago um, we have some gift certificates for some of the local bait shops. We got lures. We're looking at possibly doing some custom Fallen Trail Outdoors uh, painted lures. Um, don't hold me to that. It's, we're, we're looking at that option. It'd be kind of cool. But um, yeah, anyway, yeah, let me know what you think on the Iowa ban. Kansas already did it. Iowa's now done it. Arizona previously had done it. Um, Utah. And the more that start doing it and seeing the benefits, I mean, it could come to Wisconsin. They're, they're, they're baiting it every single year. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, thanks for watching.